Hello. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear me. Is I can my... hear you. Yeah, we can oh, hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Now I hear you guys. Perfect. Good. Great. Um, so we're just waiting a couple more minutes, maybe like one or two minutes for more people to connect. We usually have like 30 people, so I want to give everyone a chance to join. You know, I want to tell you I had a, a little bit of a hard time uh, logging in because in the email that you sent, mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't use the same computer where I have my email to see my, uh, to, to log on to Zoom. And so I just don't go to the click. I, I, I went through the Zoom, but you didn't have it in, in the notice, you didn't have the uh, password. Mm, you didn't okay. put the password, you just put the link. Mm -hmm. I actually went back to last month's meeting or, yeah, the January meeting where you did have the password. Okay. Thank you, Jaime, for letting us know. We'll make sure to include the password in the future ones. Um, we're also trying a, a new way of registering so that we can keep track of who joined. So maybe you're, you'll be asked to register through Zoom as well as registering on the Elegant Hispanic Network website. So if you see that, we're just trying to keep track of who's joining the meetings. Okay, well, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Diana Manjarres. I'm the president of EHN for this year, and uh, we're really excited for our meeting today. We have a few announcements that we want to share with you guys from EHN. In the screen here, you can see our agenda, and today we have a host presentation by Greater Elgin Family Care Center, and we will be trying out a new networking activity with breakout rooms, so hopefully that goes well. And then there will be time for announcements before the end of the meeting. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can all um, kind of see each other. And um, we have a smaller group than usual, but hopefully more people will sign in. And we are recording the meeting and we will be sharing it on our YouTube and on our Facebook page as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, one of the announcements that I wanted to make was about our membership survey. We shared about it last month, and so far we have gotten um, 31 responses from you guys. So thank you so much <coughs> if you already took the survey. Um, last year we got much less, so it's a good sign that we're getting a few more people to fill out the survey. So the deadline for that is coming up this Friday. If um, you can help us by uh, filling it out, if you haven't, that would be great. It's just helping us see how we're doing and hear from you guys about what else we could be doing more of or what we could be doing less of. So um, I'll put the link in the chat to the survey and then you can fill it out. There it goes in the chat. Another announcement we wanted to make regarding the survey so there is a question where we ask you to sign up if you want to join one of our committees. And a lot of people have selected committees, but then they haven't put in their email address. So we have no way of like, reaching out to them because the survey is anonymous. So if you remember being interested in signing up for a committee, but maybe you forgot to put your email address mm -hmm. and you haven't heard from us, please reach out to us. We uh, would love to have more people involved in the board and just to help out with the different committees. We do still have two vacancies in the board. We're still looking for a marketing chair um, and we're also looking for a finance chair. So if you are interested or have questions about the position, maybe so that you can consider it, you can reach out to me or you can send an email to our email address, info at elginhispanicnetwork.org. And another announcement, I wanted to invite Diana Ortega to share a little bit about the scholarship application if you um, want to take the virtual podium. Sure. Thanks, Diana. Sorry I'm late. I was having problems with my computer. Um, I am excited to announce that the scholarship for high school 
uh, seniors who are Hispanic and who are residents of Elgin is now on the EHN website. Um, so a lot of them are uh, graduating seniors this year who are still looking for scholarship support for college. That is still available. The deadline is April 7th. I know everyone here knows somebody who knows a student who is a high school senior. And we need all of your help, everyone's help here, getting the word out. We tend to get a lot of students from Larkin High School every year, which is great. Um, I personally would love to see applications from all the other schools um, in the U46 area that have uh, students who are residents of Elgin. So um, if you have any questions, just send a message to the EHN uh, info email and it will eventually get to me. I would also welcome and invite anybody who wants to help out with the scholarship committee this year. There is still time to sign up and do that. We will be starting to have our first meeting here in the next two or three weeks. So if you're interested in being part of the scholarship committee for 2021 for the Elgin Hispanic Network, um, let me know if you wanna put something in the chat, I can send you a private message. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. And if um, you reminded me of something, if everyone can please put in your name and your organization in the chat, that helps other people know who's here and maybe they want to reach out to you. Um, so also put in your contact info as well. And we are really excited to share that we're trying something new for next month. We received some feedback from everyone about wanting a little bit of that informal networking that we used to do when we were in person. So starting in March, we're going to have the 30 minutes of informal networking that we used to have when we were in person starting at 1130. It will be via Zoom, but if you want to just informally network with people, um, our Zoom meeting link will be open starting at 11.30 a.m. And then our meeting will start at 12. So that part is completely optional, but hopefully it creates another place for you to make some contacts and share um, the new services that you guys are offering. Um, Okay, and we, I think that's all for the announcements. So um, we're really excited to have our host organization today, uh, Greater Elgin Family Care Center. Lorena Nunez will be sharing more about them. So if you want to go ahead and get started. Thank you, Lorena. Sure. Uh, let me figure out how to share the presentation. You can see it. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So, uh, yes, thank you, Diana. My name is Lorena Nunez. I'm with Greater Elgin Family Care Center. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator. Um, and Greater Elgin Family Care Center is a federally qualified health center. I know many of you may be familiar already with our health center. Um, but our mission is to provide quality, affordable health care for all, including those without the ability to pay. Um, and we, in order to be a, a federally qualified health center, we do need to meet some strict uh, requirements set by HRSA, um, the Health Resources and Services Administration. Um, and we've actually been an FQHC since 2002. And we started back in 1990, 1988 or 19, I, I will have to <laughs> check later, but um, I wrote down 1988, but I am thinking that may be wrong. Um, so uh, we actually started at a local, uh, at the basement of a local church, um, as well as the storefront on Route 31, if you're from Elgin, you're familiar, um, and then the Community Crisis Center. So um, since then, we've definitely uh, expanded and ooh, uh, provided, uh, expanded our services and created uh, other health centers in the area. Um, so as an FQHC, uh, we do serve, we're here for underserved populations for vulnerable individuals and families. Um, and so last year, for example, we actually served 60,965 total patients. Um, 11,000 uh, were homeless, 58,000 were patients that were at or below the 200% poverty level. Um, and then 20,461 were patients who were best served in another language other than English. Um, and then 29,993 were patients who were publicly insured, uh, so Medicaid, Medicare, um, and then 23,900 patients were uninsured. Um, so we actually offer a variety of different services. So we offer 
uh, medical services for the entire family. So we offer medical services from prenatal all the way to seniors. Um, and then we also offer dental care, behavioral health, medication assisted treatment, um, as well as we offer many patient benefits. Um, and this is to support our patients as well as reduce any barriers that they may come across. Um, and integrated care is what we strive to do for our patients. Um, we know that our patients have a lot of needs. And so we try to make sure that these services are available for them. Um, and we are, we are certified by the Joint Commission as a primary care medical home, um, which means that we can provide integrated care, uh, extended access, and we can have a, a, a care relation with our patients. So they have a relationship with, uh, with our care team uh, and we're able to provide better, better care for, for our patients. Um, of course, patients are not required to uh, use all of our services, but we do encourage that um, because it, it just helps to provide a, a, just a, a better approach for their care and make sure that, they, that all of their needs are met. Um, so we, as I mentioned, we do provide medical care for the entire family. So we do provide uh, women's health care, including OBGYN services. And most of our OBs are actually female um, and patients are actually able to see our team on, their, on our website and they could see who, who their providers uh, are gonna be. Um, we do also have uh, pediatric services as well as adult health and senior health. Um, and we have an internal medicine provider um, who actually happens to also be our chief medical officer. And then we do also offer LGBTQ health services as well as some COVID-19 testing and uh, vaccines. Um, and then we're going to do questions at the end, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I did want to just talk a little bit more about our LGBTQ health. Um, so this population often encounters many barriers to care, um, and including mental health as well. So our goal is to address these barriers and be able to provide services to, to this population. And you can see here on the left side, we have a variety of different services, including STI, HIV testing and treatment, um, rapid HIV as well. Um, we have um, hormone replacement therapy and, and much more. Uh, on the right side here, you can see our team who is Dr. Riga as well as Monica Herdrich. And Monica, there's actually a really cool video on our website. If you feel free to uh, view that video later, I wanted to include it here, but we don't have time. So, <laughs> so but she's she's lovely, and she actually uh, started her care, um, I think, at, a, at an HIV clinic. And so she just became really, uh, she loved working with her patients, and so she decided to specialize in HIV care. And so this is just so important for our patients because they have somebody who who understands them and who, who's able to just meet their needs and, and provide the care that they, that they need. Um, and then I did wanna talk about COVID-19 just um, briefly. So throughout the pandemic, I mean, we've been providing care for our patients. We, we remained open and we just kind of upped our strict infection control plan that we already had in place. Um, and so just to make sure that our patients were protected and that our staff was also safe, um, and we started offering testing right away, like in April of last year. Um, and since then, we've actually now expanded to have three different types of testing. So we have the antibody serological testing, the nasal swab test, as well as the um, Abbott by Next now rapid test. Um, and now we are also providing vaccines. We're working hard to make sure that the community has access to these vaccines. And we're working with uh, our, our counties. Um, and seeing, you know, where we can provide these vaccines. We've been able to do some vaccine clinics. Um, so we've done some with the po local police departments, fire departments, uh, school districts as well, um, housing authority of Elgin as well, and I think a local church as well here in the Elgin area. Um, and we are also doing some at our health centers. They do vary, you know, depending on the vaccine supply. It's just so unknown right now. So I know it's what everybody's been saying, but we're, we're definitely um, doing our best to try to put these communities, um, put these vaccines out to the community. Um, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit about our dental clinic. We have a dental clinic here in Elgin um, and we do provide restorative and preventative dental health care. Um, and this is available for children and adults. Um, and we do accept insured patients as well as uninsured patients. Um, something I didn't include in here is that we also do partner up with, uh, we've partnered up in the past with School District Q46 as well as District 300 to do school-based dental care. Um, and of course, 
during the pandemic, we're not able to do that, but in the future, we hope to continue that partnership as well. Um, and I also wanted to just kind of share a little bit about our behavioral health services available here in the Elgin area. We do have uh, pediatric psychiatry um, as, that are, that's available for uh, ages zero to 18. We do psychiatric evaluations, medication education, medication monitoring, um, as well as individual counseling for everyone, all ages. Um, and then you can see here in this picture is our lovely therapist, Isabel Acevedo, who actually speaks Spanish. Um, so she does uh, provide services here in Elgin as well. Um, <clears throat> And then I wanted to talk about also the medication assisted treatment for opioid use disorder. Um, so the medication assisted treatment program combines uh, medication with counseling and behavioral therapies um, to provide a whole patient approach to the treatment of uh, these disorders. And research has shown that this approach can actually successfully treat these disorders um, and therefore MAT can help um, our patients sustain their recovery. So this program is integrated with our primary care, psychiatry, uh, group and individual counseling, recover, peer recovery support, as well as our care management program. It is available for uh, 18 plus, um, and it is available in Elgin, uh, Sycamore, Hanover Park, and Wheeling. So uh, one of the main things that I've touched on before was reducing barriers for our patients. Um, we know that when we were serving these vulnerable populations, there's a lot of bar barriers. So language being one, um, many of our patients don't speak English. Um, and so a lot, of our page, uh, a lot of our staff actually are bilingual in many different languages like Spanish, Hindi, Bengali, Polish, and many more. Um, and we also do have a, a professional, trans professional translation services. Um, available for, for our patients. So we, we really want to make sure that we're understanding what they, what they need and, and meeting those needs. Um, we also do offer transportation cost reimbursement to our patients, um, and especially you know, during the winter months or, or just if, if in case anything happens, cars break down, we do have this available. So um, again, making sure that our parents are able, parents, <laughs> patients are able to um, access the care that they need. So we do also connect our patients to support services, for example, WIC and family case management. Um, and of course we do accept, as I mentioned before, insured and uninsured patients. And that would be publicly insured or, or even underinsured. Okay, so I did wanna talk a little bit about uninsured patients. So we have health benefit specialists who are actually available at our health centers to help our patients apply for, for coverage. So that could be uh, like Medicaid or, or through the marketplace. Um, and then we do also offer the sliding fee discount, which is available for patients who are under the 200% poverty, uh, federal poverty guidelines. And that's based on income and family size. And we do also have the 340B drug discount program, um, whose th that uh, program is available for eligible, eligible patients um, to save money on their prescriptions by using one of our partner pharmacies. Okay, and I wish we were in person so that you could see um, our health centers and we could offer you a tour, but we are in this virtual virtual world now. <laughs> um, so here are nine of our health centers and we, we have um, health, a health center in DeKalb, Sycamore, Wheeling, uh, Hanover Park, McHenry. Um, we have a health center in Streamwood and then three locations here in the Elgin area. Um, and all of our health centers have the same kind of look and feel to them. Um, our examination rooms are the same and they, they just provide the same, the same look. And our goal is to create a nice quality space for our patients so that they can feel good uh, when they're receiving our care and they're, they're just feeling um, in a nice, they feel like they're in a nice environment. Um, yeah, so I also wanted to highlight some of our health centers here in Elgin. Um, so our Summit Health Center, um, this one is actually kind of new. It's, it's, I think it's 2018 that we moved here into this uh, health center. We combined two of our health centers um, in Elgin to make this very, very nice one. Um, it's very new, like I said, so it's super, super nice. So we do, also, we do offer uh, primary care here for the entire family, gynecology services, um, LGBTQ health is available here. 
we do have an in-house lab as well as a full service lab um, through LabCorp. And then all of our health centers do offer free pregnancy testing as well. And Seneca Health Center um, is also one here in Elgin. And this one's actually under, uh, it's being remodeled right now, the lower level is. So it's gonna be a fresh new space. Um, I think it had been quite a few years since it hadn't been remodeled. So it's gonna be very, very nice. And we're so excited to see what it turns out to be like. Um, and this is what I like to call our one-stop shop because it literally has everything for that our families would need. It has um, OBGYN services, it, it has pediatric, uh, pediatric office, and then we also have WIC and family case management. We have our lab in there as well, and we also have our dental office here. So it's, you know, they can come in for their pediatric appointment, come in for a prenatal appointment or WIC and family case management. It's all there for them. Um, and then we also have our third lo Elgin location, which is in, um, inside our, uh, the medical office building at Advocate uh, Sherman Hospital. Um, and this one is only available or open on Mondays, uh, but we do offer adult medicine um, and including like, gynecology um, and pediatrics there. All right, I don't know how I'm doing with time, but I think I have a couple more minutes. <laughs> you do. Okay, perfect. So <clears throat> hopefully I'm not speaking too fast, but. <laughs> so um, last fall we were actually recognized as among the, the best FQHCs in the US um, and in Illinois for the seventh time in a row. And we actually got one, or I'm sorry, all of them except for one award that was possible. So we're just so proud to be providing quality care for our patients. And um, our outcomes actually ranked in the top 10% of the country's 1,300 and 85 FQHC. So we're just really proud to be able to provide quality care for our patients and that our outcomes show that as well. Um, and I also wanted to touch on our patient satisfaction survey. So this one here that you can see is the, la the last survey that we just did last month uh, from our Summit Health Center. Um, you can also see one, one of the quotes that are that were taken directly from that survey. Um, and we are continuously assessing how our patients are feeling about us, how, how satisfied or unsatisfied are they feeling about us, um, about our services and about our staff. And these surveys really help us improve our services and how we serve our patients. Our patients are at the center of what we do. So this is very, very important for us. Um, and so we do these quarterly. Um, and these are available to view on the website. If you click on the, on the health center, you're able to, to read it word for word what the patients are saying about us. So, so it's really cool and we, we do have that available. And then I just wanted to give you my contact information in case anybody has any questions. Please feel free to, free to reach out um, and I'm happy to meet one-on-one -on -one if you need more information um, or whatever the case. And I think if we have any questions, I can take them now. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Lorena, for the wonderful information. So we do want to open the floor up for people to ask questions or put them in the chat and I can read them. I have a question. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Lorena. <laughs> um, and hi, everybody. This is my first um, Elgin Hispanic Network meeting, so it's nice to see you all. Um, uh, my name is Maria. I work here with, I just started working with the Elgin Police Department. We're part, well, I'm part of the Community Relations and Crime Prevention Unit, and part of my role, um, it's working with the senior population, and I just wanted to know if by any chance um, Greater Elgin has any plans to continue providing vaccines to our senior populations. Um, and access to schedule an appointment because we I get so many phone calls from seniors saying that they either don't know how to use a computer they don't know how to access the appointments online when they go in and they take their time to re register for an appointment the appointment is already taken and booked right away yeah so is are there any plans in the future and hopefully near future to continue providing community events or mobile clinics for our senior population um, yeah. And how can we partner? Like, it's not just like a question to, you know, for you, but how can mm -hmm. we help in that process? Like, for example, I was able to help a 91 year old senior today and, she, but she doesn't have transportation. So we're working to see if we can pick her up and take her to the appointment, but 
I mean, it, the phone calls we get are, are just so heartbreaking. People in their 80s, 90s, not being able to have access to the vaccine. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if you guys have talked about that yeah. and if you guys have any plans to continue partnering. Because I've seen different um, flyers, you know, yeah. advertising the vaccine. But are there any, like, local plans in the city um, to continue doing that? Mm -hmm. We're definitely open to doing something like that. So I think if 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 you want to email me, we can talk about that. Um, so we could see I can connect you to the person who's running the vaccination clinics, and then we could see you know if we could do something like that. Um, because yeah, the I know that it's very very difficult for them. And something that we do is we we don't have like a email list or anything. I know that that could also be a barrier for people to sign up um, if they don't have access to the internet or they just don't know how to work it. Um, we do just schedule appointments via phone call so that you can just call and see if, there, if there's one available, which, you know, I know that that's not the funnest thing to do, but it's easier. Um, so that, that is available. Um, and if they are our patients, we do have um, some health centers that are only reserved for patients. If they're not, there's also other health centers that are reserved for, for the general public that fall under the appropriate faces. But we are, yeah, we're definitely open to doing something like that. So just email me and then we can, we can see what we can do. And we, we have a Thank question you. from... I'm going to have in a second too, sorry. I work with the health department um, and I'm just going to, we're trying. I know it's, there's a lot going on. I just, we're doing about 1,800 people a clinic and about three or two, two or three clinics a week. And there's over 100,000 people in that 1B category. So I know it's frustrating. I promise we're working on it. We're trying to get more things figured out. I know we're working on trying to set up some clinics specifically for seniors. Awesome. So I would try calling that main health department phone number. I'll throw it in the chat and they'll get you to the person that is kind of handling those clinics and that might help as well. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Thank, Thank you, you Katie. so much. Um, so Elena Garde, I wanted to know if you can send a copy of the presentation. Is that something that you can share with her, maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, if, if she wants to email me, I'd, I'm happy to share. Okay. And then I um, wanted to ask you to share a little bit about the, the health initiative for immigrants that you guys are Oh, yeah. Doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> Diana. So I briefly mentioned our health benefits specialist, but um, they're actually able to help seniors apply for the health uh, health Benefits for Immigrant Seniors program. It's brand new. So that one is for, for seniors who are not who were not eligible for Medicaid due to their immigration status. This is a whole new program that's available for them. So we are able to help them apply for that. Um, and then they can all be obviously also receive care um, at our health center. So um, all they would have to do is call our health center. Um, there is, when whenever you call the main number, there's a whole, um, there's a menu option there and you can you can directly contact them or I can also put the direct extension in the chat here as well. Thank you. Okay. I can Thank probably share the flyer too. Sounds That'll be easiest. Are there any other questions? Uh, we have time for one more. Well, Lorena's contact information is there as well if you want to reach out to her. And um, Lorena, if you want to stop sharing your screen, thank you so much. Perfect. Um, our next item in the agenda is our networking activity. So we will be sending you into breakout rooms. And I have um, a slide here that I want to share with you about our networking activity. So in your breakout room, um, the activity is for you to talk with the people who end up in your room. It will be randomized and find one thing that you all have in common, uh, one personal thing that you have in common, and then also find one thing that all of your organizations have in common. And that will just facilitate you getting to know them. And uh, please don't pick the obvious things like we're all in Elgin, you know, uh, try to dig a little deeper. And I'll send the questions uh, once you're in the breakup room so that you guys don't have to write them down but um, I hope that this is a, a good opportunity for you guys to get to talk to some people more on a one-on-one -on -one basis so let me send you guys to the breakout rooms you can have 
uh, four breakout rooms with five to six participants. So um, we will do this for 10 minutes and there will be an announcement where you can choose to come back to the main room within like one minute. So have fun. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, I hope that, uh, I know that wasn't a lot of time to get to know everybody, but we can it always- It was fun. It was fun? Good. Yeah, yeah we were just uh, saying we like that. That was nice. I was really curious mm -hmm. if maybe one person from your group wants to share the two things that you found you had in common. So if I can have someone from group one. Who's group one? Um, so that's full. Um, okay. Food. We all, we all love to eat. <laughs> comida. Comida was our number one. Um, all cuisines, Latin to Asian. We got a little dislike on Ethi Ethiopian cuisine. But, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Someone mentioned they didn't uh, like <clears throat> Ethiopian cuisine. But all our comment was food. And then I think we didn't, we wish we had more time. But I think the biggest thing that I got from our group was that we all serve the community. Um, I guess that's our common thing in regards to what we do and stuff. So I don't want to take too much time so the next group can go. Thank you, David. Um, room two was Amber, Elena, Elisa, Lorena. Someone okay. wants to share? Well, one of the things is that no one, none of us were born in Elgin. Uh, so that's the personal thing we had in common. And then our, the thing was, uh, that was common in organizations is that we all work with kids in some way or another, even ECC with our kids' college. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. And um, room three was Dana, Jose, Lulu, Pastor Dave. Okay, um, that's our group, right? Um, so we, uh, the things that we uh, have in common is family. A lot of us spoke about our children and grandchildren. And we uh, also, uh, in terms of community, we, uh, as, as um, David said, we are serving the community. We're trying to improve lives. We're addressing needs. So I think we have all that in common. Thank you, Lulu. And the last group uh, was room four. Sure. Um, so our personal thing we all had in common is that we feel like we've all been kind of, you know, or because our whole routine has been kind of changed. We're doing things that none of us were really sure how to do before, um, and kind of having to learn things as we uh, learn things as we go and go with the flow. So it's a lot of new. Um, Organization-wise, we've all we were talking about how technology, while we're all kind of frustrated with it, it has been a really a blessing just because otherwise we would, there was so much that we wouldn't be able to do and be able to talk about because we wouldn't be able to see each other's faces. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Well, thank you everyone for joining. And we do have time for announcements. So if you have any uh, updates you want to share with the group, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand and I'll call on you. I'll go first if no one else wants to. I'm <laughs> sorry, people are raising their hands. I can stop and wait. Go ahead, Katie. Okay, so um, like I'm with coordinated intake in the health department. So our biggest update is we just need referrals. If you guys have any families that you think might benefit from home visiting, send me an email. I can send you a referral form or I can do them over the phone. Um, we, have, we would love, I know we know that there's families out there that need home visiting and we would love to be able to help them. Okay, thank you, Katie. And I said Lulu's hand was up. Sure, I don't have an announcement, but I want to personally thank our board of trustees, uh, the, the chair of our, of our board, Dr. Donna Redmer, for joining us today. I, I, just, I, I have been at, at ECC for a very short time, and I have learned that our trustees are the best. And, you know, when you talk about, uh, a lot of people are talking about having a diverse board. Sometimes we have to look beyond that and you have to look like inside of here, the heart, because I think our trustees are really, really care for our students regardless of who they are and they, they, they work so hard for them. I just wanted to acknowledge that because it is very rare to see a chair of a board to come and join a group like this. So uh, Dr. Redmer, thank you so much. Thank you, Lulu, and thank you, Dana, for being here. Um, I see uh, Britt Fulton. 
Yes, thank you. First of all, it's nice to be back. I recognize Deanna and some other folks here, so it's good to see you. But the other thing I wanted to make is the township is having a blood drive March 13th at the township office on McLean Boulevard. So if anybody wants to give blood, needs to give blood, uh, has friends they want to give blood, um, it's from 9 until 1. And you can find more information on the uh, Elgin Township website. Thanks. Thank you. And Amber? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to announce um, some of a lot of you are on our mailing list, but some aren't that on Friday, March the 12th, we are having a um, anti racism virtual conference. And um, we have two speakers. One is a pediatrician that works for Lori's Children's Hospital. Um, but it's going to be quite good. The other speaker is from Erickson Institute. And so I hope that you can join us. Amber, what time is that? It starts at 8.30 in the morning, and I can, um, I can drop a link in the, um, I, I'll drop the bit.ly and that you can go to and read more about it in the chat. Thank you, Amber. I'm Marlene? Yeah, I am Marlene Daubert from Zion Lutheran Church. I also have another hat on as co-president of AAUW, American Association of University Women. And it is time, we also have a scholarship available, but we pick up where you have left off after they have completed their first semester. So they've already had to started. So if you know of women, girls, they have to be at least 19 year olds that are currently in college working on their associates or bachelor's degree. We have four scholarships to give away this spring. Um, so I will put in the chat the email address or the uh, the website address, but and certainly we encourage um, you to help get the word out so they can apply for those thousand dollar scholarships. Thank you so much, um, Maria. Hi guys, um, I just sent out a flyer. It's a share your story event. Um, we I'm partnering up with Senior Services Associates. Um, and Professor Antonio Ramirez uh, from Elgin Community College. We are sh um, talking about Chicagolandia Oral History Project, and it's a story. It's basically collecting stories from seniors or and anybody really, but this particular event is targeted to seniors uh, who are Spanish speaking or bilingual and who want to share their story of how they ended up in Elgin. Like, um, so I, I sent the flyer, it's open to any senior. Um, it's a bilingual event and it's, it's gonna be fun because we're gonna be learning about like the history of the first families that came to Elgin. So if you guys have any family members, um, you know, Abuelitos, I want to invite, um, please um, share them with your resources. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Um, the library, Tina Rigucci, uh, would be a really good contact for you as well. Um, Elena, I think I saw your hand was up. Yes, I wanted to mention that um, the next session for our ESL, GED, and citizenship classes will begin in middle of April, but students should start the process now since they have to be tested and go through some other steps. Okay, thank you, Elena. And Elisa, I see your hand is up. Did you say me? I wasn't sure I could get in here. Oh, okay, sorry. I just wanted to kind of um, talk a little bit about the services that we have at the VNA. One of the things that we are doing, I know we mentioned a little bit, Lorena, about uh, co the COVID uh, vaccines. We are also doing it at the VNA, and right now we are very focused on the seniors. So this is another opportunity if they haven't signed up, um, they can sign up on our wait list, and then we go through the wait list. And even as days go, go by, Sometimes we have extra vaccines, so we'll go on the wait list and call people last minute. Like we'll have five um, vaccines that we, you know, we need to um, give out, so we administer them and we'll go down the list. So that's another opportunity for those who would like to do that, so that's something else. And also I'll be sharing, um, we're going to be having an event that's called Smile with Style, and it's from Familia Dental uh, and us DNA. We're going to do a virtual, it's going to be this Saturday from 11 to 12, and it's to help the kids um, learn a little bit more about oral health, and then nutrition, so it's just uh, information, and I'll send that flyer out. So, and then if they can register, that'd be great. The information will be on the flyer. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa. Anyone else have any updates? 
I have a question regarding the vaccine for Elisa. Elisa, is, uh, do people sign up by going to your website or is there a telephone number or how does that work? I can um, put our phone number. Um, we have the link obviously online, but also we have a group of people that are helping those who are having difficulty. So if they call and say they're having difficulty trying to sign on the website to get the vaccine and get on the wait list, because it is a little bit cumbersome, it's not that easy. Um, then we actually have people trying to help them sign up. So that's something that we can help with. And then we have a waiting list too. So that wait list is what kind of help, you know, move forward a little bit faster. So hopefully that, and right now we are focused on seniors, um, you know, making sure we get them in and we try to help them once they come in um, to get processed and not wait too long as well. Is this for both Elgin and Aurora? Yes, uh, yes. Right now, um, our two current sites is uh, Aurora on Highland and the uh, clinic on Villa Street. And then we will be adding Carol Stream as well um, on the Mona Kea site. So we do have um, so far two sites and the third one is actually in the process to get going soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else have any updates or questions to the group? Um, Diana just sent a reminder about the EHM scholarship application, if you can help us spread the word. We did post about it on Facebook, so you can share that post on your personal page that will help us reach more people. And the deadline for that is April 7th. Um, I know sometimes you you want to save information from the chat, so we're going to stay on for a little bit if you want to take down some email addresses. Um, if you're ready to log off, that's also fine if nobody else has any updates. And um, we hope to see you next month. And we will be having the informal networking at the beginning of um, the meeting, which is um, 1130. And Elisa, I guess, is sharing her flyer for the Smile with Style event. Oh, Elena, you can I'm leaving. I have another appointment. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye. Thank hey. you. It was nice meeting you all. Have Maria, a good day. Maria, before you leave, oh. are you still there? Yeah. This is Rick. Yes. Now, are you the one that talked about share your story with seniors? Yeah. Okay. And that's coordinated via senior services? Yes. Okay. I follow up with them. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 posted, the, I posted the flyer on the chat, but... <laughs> I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't see the flyer. But. I can go ahead and email you, email it to you. Did you put your information? Yeah, rick yeah. at elgintownship.com. That'd be great. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, rick, did you have another question? No, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for joining. No, thanks for being here and letting me in. Now that we're dues paying members again. Well, not, well, again, yeah, but all right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for that. All right.